Hello, my name is Chef Colin Roach, and welcome to another episode of Wicked Easy Cooking, the show that takes what are sometimes complicated and difficult recipes and breaks them down so they're easier, while throwing in helpful tips, techniques, and shortcuts I've along the way. I've been getting a lot of requests to do a dessert. So today, I'm going to show you how I make wicked easy churros with a chocolate dipping okay, sauce. Okay, so we're making wicked easy churros, which are these fluted pastries that are you know, crunchy on the outside with that cinnamon sugar and then soft in the inside like a cream puff. I have the recipe here, which I'm going to be posting at the end of this video in case you want to make it yourself, which I hope you do. So as you can see, I have the, all the ingredients lined up. Let's go through that so you'll know. So it's gonna be in three steps, or three sections. The first one is we're gonna make the dough. The second one is we're gonna cook the churros. And lastly, we're gonna season them and serve while making our chocolate dipping sauce. So the first part here is the dough. We're gonna have two cups of water, uh, two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We also have our two tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna put in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I've got some salt to put into it. We have two cups of all-purpose flour, and then I'm gonna have two large eggs that I've already whipped up. That's gonna be basically our dough. We're also gonna need oil. You know, a couple of quarts for oil, and you can cook that in a pan on the stove, or you could cook it in a deep fry. And I'm gonna show you both of those alternatives as we go. Once those churros are cooked, we're gonna to have to roll them in some cinnamon sugar. So as you'll see in the recipe under coating, we have about a half a cup of white sugar, and then we have you know, some cinnamon, maybe about a half to three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon we're gonna add in there. That's what the churro's gonna get rolled in, which is gonna to stick to the outside of it. And then we're gonna make a chocolate dipping sauce. So I'll show you that one, how to make it, but it starts with cups of heavy cream. We've got about four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're gonna put in a pinch of salt and a little bit of vanilla, combine all of that to heat it up and let it melt, and that's gonna be our sauce. All right, so let's get into the steps now and let's make these churros. Okay, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta make the dough. So we're gonna take our two cups of water into a you know saucepan, add in our couple of tablespoons of butter, we've got our sugar, and we've got to add in some salt. Our salt says that it needs to be, you know, about a half a teaspoon. We'll take a little guess there. And then we're going to add in our vanilla. And the vanilla they want us to put in here, about a teaspoon. So we'll just take, take a guess here. Perfect. And what we're going to do is bring it up to a boil to let the sugar dissolve and the butter to melt. So I've got that on my burner here. We'll bring it up to a boil. Then we're going to remove it from the heat with a spatula. We're going to fold in our flour. Okay? Then we're going to move it over to our mixer and get it mixing. Let it cool down a little bit and we're going to add in our eggs. We don't want to add in the eggs to the hot mixture. It'll turn into scrambled eggs. So I'm going to show you that as soon as that comes up to a boil. Okay, so our liquid has come to a boil, our butter has melted, and our sugar has dissolved. Now we're going to add in our flour or the rubber spatula, add it in all at once, and we're going to fold this in just to get it mixed together and make it into like a soft dough. I can show you a little bit what it looks like here. Oh, this looks like oatmeal. You know, kind of a paste. And try to get all the streaks of flour out of it. And that's good. But we don't want to add our eggs into this yet because it would cook them right now. So we're going to let it cool while mixing it in our mixer. So we're going to use the paddle. We're going to transfer this into a bowl. And then we're going to turn it on at eh, medium speed. And we're going to fluff this up a little bit and while cooling it. And then we're going to add in our eggs. And that'll be our dough. And then we can pipe it out and get it frying. Pretty easy. Okay, it's fully incorporated right now, but it's still a little hot. So I'm just going to let it keep going as it cools before I add in our two whole eggs. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our eggs all mixed in. Our mixture is still warm, but it wasn't hot. You can see it's nice and smooth and pliable. This is the best time to pipe it. Because if you try to pipe this when this is cold, oh, it'll be squeezing forever. So while it's still warm is the best time for us to pipe it. Um, 
Now, I'm going to be using this star tip right here. And as I note in the recipe, it tells you the size. If you don't have one, you could do straight, whatever you like. I like the star tip because that's what puts those traditional ridges in the sides of the churro, which is great for picking up the chocolate sauce later on. But it also makes it really attractive. So we're going to use this star tip. So I put it in my bag here. And you can pick up disposable bags in most grocery stores, things like that. You can even make your own with a, um, you know, Ziploc type bag and put it in that and cut off one of the corners. So you always want to fold down the edges of the bag. That way if anything gets on it, it's not on the outside of it and keeps it a little bit cleaner. And so now we're just going to fill our bag. So we have our nice warm dough. Stick that down in there. It's very sticky because of the, you know, the eggs and the sugar in here. So put that down in there. And then every once in a while, just give it a little shake like that to get it to go down further. And you don't want to fill these more than, you know, halfway, three quarters, because as you're squishing it down, it's going to want to come out the other end. So it makes it much easier if you don't overfill it and just, you know, do it two or three times. So let's see how this looks. So fold it back up over, twist the ends here, move it all the way down towards the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty good. I could probably put a little bit more in, but while we have it, we'll just do it from here. And you can see it's starting to come out the end there. Now, this is a good part if you have children at home to get them involved because they could pipe it out with you and they can also help you with the frying, which they love getting involved in. Now, we're going to pipe these out onto a sheet tray and then we're going to let them cool for a while. Now, some traditional recipes have you pipe this right into the oil. But I find that a little difficult, not to mention dangerous. One, as you're piping it, it's kind of hard to be cutting it, and as it drops, it makes splashes, which could, the very least, get your counter and your stove all greasy. But at the very worst, it burns your hands and your forearms. So I'm going to pipe it into a sheet tray, let them cool a little bit so they firm up, and then we're going to take those little logs and put those into our fryer. So I have some scissors here. We're going to use it to cut. You want to use some clean scissors that you use specific for cooking or some kitchen shears if you have them. It works better than a knife because it'll cut it. And also a, a sheet tray. You could put a piece of parchment paper on here or you could spray it. I happen to have a you know, coconut spray here, but you could use any one you want. We're just going to spray this so it doesn't stick and it'll help us later on remove it from the pan before it goes into our deep fryer. And then we're going to want to pipe it into about six inch little logs. So uh, we'll put it here and that's about six. And then you can either put the tip down like that or as I mentioned, use the scissors to cut it. So you can see I have one here already. Oops, sliding a little bit there. And we're just going to do you know, two rows of, I don't know how many I'll probably get, maybe 20 churros here. You could make them longer if you want to, bigger tip, make them you know, fatter, skinnier, whatever works for you. Now, as I mentioned, let me stop here. I know it's great to get your kids involved. So I'm going to bring in my son, Charlie. Come on in here, Charlie, who's working the camera. And we're going to get him to uh, assist me with this. So this is uh, my son, Charlie. He has his own uh, show. If you haven't seen it, Cooking with Charlie. He does all kinds of great little desserts. So, and he does other dishes as well. I think the last one he did was on omelets. So check it out if you haven't. So hey, how are you doing? Do you like churros? Um, yes, <laughs> it is sort of like a unwritten rule in our family. Like whenever we go out to have Mexican, we always have to have churros as dessert. Yeah, I know when we've been to Disney World, we always order them as well whenever we time we go to those theme parks. So they're really great. Epcot. So uh, why don't I pipe them and you cut them? Okay, here's some scissors here. I'll pipe them out when we get to the right length. You just come in here and cut, okay? All right, go ahead. Good. 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 And here we go. Okay, why don't you try piping some and I will cut. And then I'll refill that bag. Go ahead, squeeze down. What you like to do is put your hand like this and then squeeze this way so it doesn't come back up on you. I right, keep it nice and twisted to keep it uh, at the end of the bag. There you go. Let it, let it flow out. Don't pull it. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good. All right. We're going to keep doing this. We'll be back with you in a minute when we get ready to fry.
Okay, so as you can see, we've got all of our churros piped. We weren't exact. I think in the recipe it says six, on, six inches, but we did all different sizes here, but that's what's fun about it. You know, so now we're gonna wanna chill these down. Recipe says 15 minutes to an hour, just to firm them up a little bit before deep frying. So we're gonna do that now. We put those in the fridge, Charlie? Okay. Great. Um, so now as he puts those in, we let those chill down. I wanna talk about the next steps in here, which is cooking the churros, which is step two in here. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to fry it in batches. So what we're gonna do is have our oven on 200 degrees, like a warming oven, and as we fry the churros, we're going to put them on a sheet pan with a rack on them. So that way they can stay warm until we get all the batches done. We're also, don't want to forget, we're going to make our cinnamon sugar to roll them in, and we also have to make our chocolate dipping sauce. So we're going to do that in just a second, but now I want to just talk about the deep fryer for a minute, okay? So come on over, let's take a look at those. Okay, so our churros are in the fridge now, cooling down. In a minute, we're going to bring them out and we're going to fry them. Now you can use a pan, just put some oil in it, you know, keep it about 350 to 375. But those open pans, they're a little tough. They also put a lot of grease into the air. It's hard to regulate that temperature and you don't want to get it too hot uh, because then you get into the smoke point and it's not really good. It breaks down the, the integrity of the oil. So if you can, and you do a lot of deep frying, I would suggest that you buy yourself a, some kind of fryer. There's a lot out there. This one is a DeLonghi. Um, I, I kind of like it. We use it for a lot of stuff. Um, it's easy, it's contained, it has a filter in it, so as it's frying, any of that you know, evaporation that's coming up, any of those fumes gets caught in the filter, so it doesn't really smell too much. And it also has a thermostat down the bottom, so it's very easy to regulate the temperature. And then red light goes on when it is below that, and then so I can regulate it. I won't put a batch in until the oil returns to its temperature. Easy to operate, just push a button and the cover comes up. Has this nice little handle basket here that you pick up and then you just lift it up. And then I can take out items, I can put it back down, it locks in place, and then I put the handle back down. You know, once the items are frying, just drop the cover. So it makes it really easy. And we're gonna do that in a second. I'll actually have Charlie do it. And once we take the items out, we're gonna put it on paper towel to absorb it, and then we're gonna put it into our rack, which is in our oven down here, to keep it warm. We're also gonna jump onto the other side there in just a minute and make our cinnamon sugar as well as our chocolate sauce. Okay, so it took about, this was a gallon, so it took about two quarts, a little bit over that, and oil. So that's what you'll need. The other good thing about this is I can save the oil or store the oil right in this. It preserves it and then I can use it you know, sometime this week to fry some fish or some chicken fingers or something else if I choose. Or I could filter it. So again, I'll put the link to that uh, down below in the other comments section. You can check it out, get it on Amazon. I think it's about $60, $65. So it's, you know, it seems to be reasonable. Okay, let's fry some. Okay, so while our churros are chilling down and we've got our oil coming up the temperature, let's make our cinnamon sugar that we're gonna roll them in as well as our chocolate dipping sauce. You have these in your recipes, the amounts, and then also the steps. So I'm gonna actually have Charlie come back in and ask him to do this for you, okay? There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the chocolate dipping sauce for the churros. So what you need is I have my 3 fourths cup of heavy cream. Pour that in my mixing bowl. And then I'm going to put my 4 ounce of semi-sweet chocolate chips in, which is right here. Now we have put in a pinch of salt. Now we're going to put it in the microwave for approximately two minutes. Okay, so while our chocolate chips are melting into the heavy cream in the microwave, we are going to make the coating for the churros. So what I have here is a half a cup of sugar in this bowl. And now we're going to put three fourths teaspoon of cinnamon. So let's put that in and then we're gonna mix it. See how it's starting to turn into like a light brown color? You don't want it too white or too brown. Nice and even, because this is what people think of when they taste churros, the cinnamon and sugar on the outside. 
So now let's check on our chocolate dipping sauce. So now let's stir it, but be careful, it's hot. So I'm gonna stir in the chocolate chips. They might be a little clumpy. Okay, so now we want to put in the 1 4th teaspoon of the vanilla. So let's put that in. Be careful, the vanilla normally comes out fast, so. That is about 1 4th of a teaspoon. Okay, so now let's mix it again with the vanilla in it. Alright, so now we have our chocolate dipping sauce and our coating for the churros. Okay, now that Charlie has made the great chocolate dipping sauce, look at that, that's beautiful, and we'll see that when we plate it up, as well as our cinnamon sugar that we're gonna roll them in, and we have our chilled down churros. Let's cook a few, so I'm gonna throw them in the deep fryer right now, and then we're gonna see how they look, okay? So let me do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, our churros are done, let's grab them and let's eat them. Okay, you can see a couple of them had a few blowouts here in the hot oil, but that's okay. Now, if we wanted to do this in batches, I would put those in the oven, keep them warm while I continue to fry. But we're going to stop now because we want to try them. So we've got them on our absorbent paper <clears throat> to absorb any excess grease. And now we're going to roll them in our cinnamon sugar, and then we're going to plate them up and serve them with a chocolate sauce. And at this time, I think I'm gonna call Charlie in because he's gonna be my super taster and test him from the kid point of view. Come on in, Charlie. All right, can you just roll those in that sugar there? You know, get them all nice and cinnamony. I got a little plate here for us. In the meantime, I'm gonna put some chocolate in a, the dipping sauce in a little bowl here on the side for us to dip into. One. Okay, put that off to the side, put that over there, let me get rid of this, I'm going to put that one right there, shake off any excess. All right, so we got some churros, different sizes, different shapes, but that's okay, they are homemade, not commercial. We've got our cinnamon sugar, they're still warm, just came out of the deep fryer, and we've got our chocolate sauce. So now, proof is in the pudding. Dig in, pick one out. I'm going right into the chocolate sauce. Let's try it. Huh. Mm, mm. Huh. Soft inside, crispy on the outside. Chocolate sauce is awesome. Great ratio with the cinnamon. What do you think? Good. <laughs> I would Good. buy them. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode that you try these at home. And again, if you like this episode or other episodes, please hit subscribe down below and we'll see you next time. Bye now.